We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. At 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. We have a liftoff. Liftoff on Apollo. Well, this is such uh, an incredible honor for me. Uh, you know, it's not often that you get to talk to a real live astronaut. Astronaut Clayton Astro Clay Anderson. Uh, he is Nebraska's only astronaut. He spent 167 days, 38 hours and 29 minutes in space. So he did six spacewalks. Now think about that. He lived in isolation before the coronavirus. So <laughs> that's why I think I have so many questions for him. I'm, just, I'm going crazy in my condo here. And he spent 30 years working for NASA, 15 as an engineer and 15 as an astronaut. Uh, he's got quite a few books. Uh, he's got the book. It's an award-winning book, The Ordinary Spaceman. You know, I, I watched a Twilight Zone episode recently. It was the first Twilight Zone ever. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think so, but it's been a long time since I've seen it. Okay, so the this is the very first Twilight Zone ever. The, it was like their pilot episode to see if they were going to do a series. And I watched this about a month ago, not knowing the coronavirus thing. And it was about this guy and he wakes up and he's in this town and he's all alone and he's going crazy just going throughout this town. And then at the end of the twilight zone, you realize he is an astronaut in a space capsule and he just cracked mentally and went crazy. Uh, <laughs> how much time were you on the space station? Uh, 151 days, 18 hours, 23 minutes and 14 seconds. <laughs> Approximately. So here is a question I have for you, because right now we are going through this coronavirus. But what this really fascinates me is your mental toughness, because you're not saying you have mental toughness, but I know you have to. Um, and I'm going to go back to that Twilight Zone episode of that guy in this space capsule. And then the whole episode is all this crazy stuff. And at the end, you realize he snapped, he cracked. Uh, so I guess I have two. The question here is twofold. And I, uh, the first part is, is does NASA do a lot of psychological tests on you? To, they don't? Not really. But keep going. Keep going. <laughs> so, okay. So how do you deal with the isolation? Because we're all right now, so many people feel like they're in isolation, the coronavirus, and we're really not, not compared to the isolation you were in. How did you deal with that isolation and how did you keep your mind healthy? Well, there's two things. Let me answer or go back to the first thing. We, I, don't feel I got much psychological training at all, right? The way you get your train, your psychological training is they put you in, in, and they would argue that we did get psychological training because they put me in winter survival. They put me in on an eight-day camping trip with other astronauts and left us in the woods together. Um, they put us underwater for uh, a week or two weeks to live together. So yeah, that's all psychologically effective, right? It, it puts you in the environment where it's just you and your crewmate. So in fairness to them, that's psychological training. Now, did anybody sit down with me and talk about the psychological aspects? Yeah, I got a couple hour long briefings where some guy went through PowerPoint charts and I remember him saying, and these were exact words, don't count on anyone but yourself. That was basically the best psychological training I got, was to count on myself because you're on your own. And without my family, I was essentially on my own. Uh, yeah, you have the mission control guys that help you with technical things, and, and you do get a psych counselor and a medical counselor on the ground that you can talk to on a weekly basis uh, to try to get through any issues you had. Like, for example, my mom was fighting lung cancer when I launched. And I had no idea she'd be alive when I came back home. And 
I also got, if you read my book, The Ordinary Spaceman, I got crossways with the mission control guys and it, and it caused issues. And so I would talk with the site guy about what was going on there, but he had really no power to help me. He was just a voice of reason and ear that I could talk to. So now I make it to space and I'm in an aluminum can with two Russian guys for almost six months. Well, how did I deal with that isolation? Well, it was easier because I could send email and receive email every day. I could call my wife or anyone I wanted to on a telephone every day. I could have a video teleconference with my wife and family and kids or friends once a week. And then I always had the Mission Control Center to talk to whether it was a work question or just trying to be fun or stir up conversation. Of course, they're better at the work questions than they are at the stirring up fun and having a conversation. Right. The other aspect of this is we're busy almost every minute of the day. You know, they keep you really busy. From the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, your day is pretty well packed. And, and I think most people, no matter what their job or their situation is, if their day is pretty packed with stuff, they often go at the end of the day, wow, that day just flew by, Right. And so they never even thought about the fact that they might be isolated in a warehouse or in the back of a truck or, you know, wherever they might be uh, performing whatever function it is. So to me, it's hard to think of the isolation in space as the isolation we're having on the ground because, you know, I was working all the time. If all of us in our homes, in your condo, in my house, if you had tasks you were doing every five minutes of your day, this quarantine idea would be a little less daunting, I think, for everybody. Uh, the problem is, is we have a lot of time on our hands that we didn't have before, and we have to figure out ways to utilize that time. Um, in space, I was actually wanting to have free time so I could relax, I could chill, I could talk to my wife or send an email to some friends or actually look out the window and watch the earth roll by below, which is, is a huge uh, stress reliever. It's very relaxing. It's, it's, quite, it's also quite exciting. But those things all coupled together make me think that I wasn't really that isolated. Wow. So somebody who's just now telling us that they're floating up there in space, looking down at the earth, looking down at the other 7 billion of us, they weren't isolated. Uh, and yet, so many people right now on the ground during this quarantine feel like we're isolated. But you, did you have any like, I guess you didn't really have to play like mental games with yourself because you're, you're, you were always so busy and always focused on a task. Your mind didn't really, it didn't really go crazy, I guess. Well, I got bored twice. Okay. <laughs> I remember. And the first time I got bored, I tried to play Tiger Woods video golf. <laughs> And by the end of the four hours that it took me to load the computer program onto the laptop in the space station and then play, try to play the game, I was done. I didn't want to do it anymore. And I never touched it again because it took almost four hours to follow the procedure and load, locate the, the drive to load that software for the game on the appropriate computer because they don't launch that way. It's not like... I can go to the TV and pick up my hand controller and start going. So even in the midst of me being bored, trying to do something new and relax, everything associated with that was too difficult and it, it just turned me off from even doing it. And I had two Russian crewmates who I loved dearly and, and enjoyed a lot. And so we spent a lot of time together in off time, right? We're working, 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 working. Oh, lunchtime. Working, 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 coffee break, working, 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 dinner time, and then prep for sleep, right? So you're, you are isolated, right? I could not go outside and feel the breeze and smell the grass and listen to the guys mowing yards and yell across the cul-de-sac to my neighbor, hey, how you doing? I couldn't do any of that because I couldn't go outside. But I didn't ever really feel that isolated unless... I was being mentally pissed off by the ground, which did happen. And they were messing with my family, which did happen. 
And that's the only time I felt isolated when I was so mad at those people for what they were doing to me and my family at the time. I couldn't do anything. I was trapped in space. Then I felt isolated. Because it was a feeling of helplessness in a way. Exactly. Yeah. It's, so it's, it's not a, so, so when people think of the quarantine they're in now, um, I would challenge them to not think of why you're hopelessly quarantined, right? I would think of all the things that are available to you. You can go outside, you can call someone on the phone, you can watch movies and you can play video games. You can go in your backyard and plant flowers. You know, you, we're not struggling to find food, at least most of us, or drink, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Right. <laughs> so, so that quarantine idea is totally different than when I was in space and I was totally helpless. I could not reach out and put my hand on my wife's shoulder. I couldn't hug my kids. I, I couldn't do anything to help them through the predicament they were in. And that is a pretty helpless feeling. And so it sounds like a lot of what you're saying right now to help us with this quarantine is focus on the positive things that we can do, communicate with other people, and uh, maybe stay busy a little bit. Don't let your mind just wander and sit there. Right. It, it's people, if they wake up every morning and have, schedule, a lot of astronauts have talked about this. The schedule is important, right? At 8 o'clock, I got to do this. At 8.30, I do this. At 9.15, I got to do this. As long as you're keeping that schedule, um, it's very helpful from keeping your brain from going to the wrong place. But when we're not going to work or we're not doing the things we do on a normal day, we're all quarantined in our house or our apartment or our condominium, that schedule kind of goes out the window. So I'd encourage people to try to create a new schedule where you wake up, you have some breakfast, you maybe do email for an hour or two, but then you do something fun for an hour and, or then maybe you go outside and take a walk and, and try to make that your regimen to keep your brain from becoming idle. Because if it's idle, that's when I think you get the most frustrated. Tell me a little bit about your books. Well, I've written, my memoir is called The Ordinary Spaceman from Boyhood Dreams to Astronaut. And it came out in 2015, I think. Uh, and it's the story of my 15 years as an astronaut. Um, I think it's one of the most unique astronaut memoirs ever written. I think people will laugh, smile, cry, and go, WTF. <laughs> so and they can go to my website astroclay.com and they can purchase my books there and I will autograph them and ship them to them uh, it's an honor to call you friend I thank you for carving a little bit out of your time click the links below uh, down in the description of this video I've got all the links that uh, astronaut clay just mentioned <laughs> so go go and follow him on Instagram and social media uh, do everything you can to support this guy because he took the time out for us today. And man, I just want to say thank you one final time. Hey, my pleasure, Ron. It's uh, great to see you again and uh, keep in touch and we'll see what happens next. I'll see you again uh, sometime, man. Thank you very much. All right, buddy. All right. <laughs> I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man. One I am for me and